You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. Joining me for the final edition of WP Sports for 2017 is Justin, Jesse, Chris, and Justin. But first, we go to our correspondent, Joe Rea, for the latest on the men's basketball team. It's official. On Wednesday, the Pioneers got their first NJAC win of the season against their Route 46 rival, the Montclair State Redhawks. With 10 minutes remaining in the second half, the Pioneers knocked down 18 three-pointers and overcame a 17-point deficit. They shot 41% from behind the arc, including a staggering 58% in the final 10 minutes of the game propelling the comeback. The student section couldn't get enough, and neither could coach Brian Chapman. The very animated Chapman is in his third season as head coach after being the assistant coach since 1995. With only three seniors, it's the most inexperienced team he has had since taking over. But when I spoke to him after the game, he said that he doesn't think that that'll be a problem. We don't have a lot of guys back from last year, and we're still kind of growing as a team, and we're learning about each other. And I think tonight, we did it against Jersey City, not so much against Rowan, but really tonight was our best effort where we shared the ball, and some of the young guys are starting to find out what college basketball is about, and now they're stepping up, and that's what happened tonight, I thought. So with that win versus Montclair, the Pioneers cracked the win column in the conference standings now 1-3. and three. They'll look to make it two in a row tomorrow at Stockton University. Back to you, Chris. Thanks, Joe. Before we get into the men's team, the women's team also had a big game the same night. Justin? Well, Chris, we saw a tough matchup for the ladies. They, they struggled against Montclair State. It's going to be one of the toughest teams. They play in the conference, so let's see how they did. Well, to start things off, once again, they're playing Montclair State here at home. And to get things started, Julia Vita goes to the basket with a nice right-handed layup. She had some tough baskets, but she struggled overall. There's Sahana Asani. She's made her name known the last couple games. And Tori Wetzel finds Brianna Brooks cut to the basket. That's a name we're going to hear a lot in this highlight call. Tori Wetzel was a presence on defense, but like I said, the offense struggled. She had two steals and three blocks. Julia Revita thinking about going coast to coast, but once again, Brianna Brooks with a nice backdoor cut to get the left-handed floater to go. And here is Julia Revita once again finding Tori Wetzel in the beautiful pick and roll there. And Emma Jaquetti with the rejection on one of her rivals. And here comes Brianna Brooks. She gets the loose ball and gets it over to Ashley Castillo. And Ashley Castillo is going to knock down the three ball. She was one of the only pioneers to knock down some threes for this team. And now she finds Brianna Brooks once again along the baseline. She gets her floater to go. And Alyssa Giordano, a name we've yet to call much this year, she gets a, bu a bucket to go in garbage time towards the end. And here's Ashley Castillo picking up a loose ball and finding Tori Wetzel cut into the paint. And that does it for the ladies. They struggled overall. They ended up losing the game 65-56. to 56. They got punched in the mouth in the fourth quarter, responded for a little bit, but it wasn't enough. Do you have a key player from the big game from the Montclair State against William Patterson? I'll tell you what, I do. Unfortunately, she was in the red, but it looked like she didn't belong. Her name was Katie Sire. She absolutely killed the Pioneers. She had 29 points and 10 rebounds. Think about it, those are her season averages. She's averaging 26 and eight on the season. It's pretty incredible. She also pulled down five offensive rebounds of those 10 boards, and she added four steals to her stat line. And to be honest, watching her play out there, it looked like she was having an off night, and she still finishes with 29 points. I mean, what can you really do about that? It was a tough one indeed for the Pioneers. We'll take a look at some of the final numbers from the game, seeing how the Pioneers finished out in an unsuccessful game against the number 25 ranked Red Hawks. Final score 65 to 56. Pioneers 7 for 12 from the free throw line, but look at Montclair State 18 for 23. They got to the line 23 times. Then the three point ball, 3 for 13 for the Pioneers, 7 for 20 for Montclair State. And the turnovers, Montclair State didn't have that clean of a game, but William Patterson just edging them 22 to 19. Justin, we'll start with you. What was your biggest takeaway from this game? For me, it just looked like the Pioneers didn't match up very well with the Red Hawks. Um, Kate Toby and Katie Sire are, are two of the bigger ladies on that team, and Toby's running the offense out there. So, for example, Toby's six foot running the offense, and the lead point guard for the Pioneers is Ashley Castillo, and she's 5'3 on a good day. So it was a tough matchup for them. Uh, Toby has that advantage over a lot of teams, and that's a big reason why Montclair State is one, ranked 25th in the country, Two, seven and one overall, and three undefeated in the NJAC at 4 0. Justin? For me, it's got to be the free throws. William Patterson, they got, they got into foul trouble very early, and that is really what led Montclair State to go into the line 23 times. 
And also, William Patterson, they missed five of their free throws. If they had made those, the game would have been a lot closer. Jesse. You know, when you look at it and you look back to the Rowan game, it seems when William Patterson plays against these good teams, when they come out of the break, when we go into halftime, it seemed like a close game. When we come out in the third and fourth quarter, we just don't come out with that same intensity. We got to fix that. We got to come out and just know what we got to do in our assignments. Chris Douglas, what did you say? Montclair State made a huge adjustment at halftime. William Patterson was only down three going into the half, and Montclair State came out in a similar press that William Patterson runs and William Patterson had no answer for it. And it was the size at guard, like Justin said, that was also a huge mismatch. And just handling the ball in general, William Patterson struggled in the second half. One thing they have to correct going forward, both the men and the women, it seems like both teams have struggles coming out of the gate in the second half. They have a solid first half. They keep up with level of competition no matter who they're playing, whether it be Montclair State, TCNJ, Rowan, you name it. But they come out in the beginning of the second half or beginning of the third quarter, they don't have an answer. The other team goes on a run, and once the fourth quarter time comes around, it's a little bit too late. Now, our correspondent Joe Ray earlier talked about the men's team with a big victory. Justin, go more in depth on the win for the men. I'll tell you what, this had to be the game of 2017 for the Pioneers. They played fantastic, so let's take a look at how they did. Let's cut straight to the second half. Well, let's keep it in the first half. They played against Montclair State. Sean Smith knocks down the three ball. He was knocking down threes all night long. A nice layup there from George Sapp. And now we have Peter Martinez on the wing. He had maybe one of his best games as a pioneer. He's only a sophomore, so he's got a lot left of that. Keon Osborne, another guy who hasn't had a lot of opportunities this year, knocks down the corner three. And we have some good defense from Henry Voorhees. He played very well that night as well. And there's Sean Smith on the deck, still knocking down the three. Here we go again, Sean Smith. It's a name we're going to be saying a lot all season. This was his first start of the year, and he made a huge impact on the game. His shooting is a big reason why William Patterson played very well this game. Sean Smith, another three. He had five in the first half, along with Richie Espinel, who knocks down the jumper. And now this is where things really start to get interesting. Like Joe had mentioned before, at one point, the Pioneers were down 17, and you just saw Dominic Mignon knock down a huge three that helped spearhead this run. McGillen finds his freshman teammate, Asani. He knocks down the three ball as well, and they cut into the lead. Again, some great defense from Henry Voorhees. He rejects the shot. Mitchell White, who had a very good game from Montclair State, and McGillen is off to the races. He almost loses the dribble, but he finds a cutting Henry Voorhees. First he gets the block, then he gets the layup on the other end. Dominic McGillen, once again, huge three ball from the left wing. At this point, the rec center was on their feet. Peter Martinez in the corner. He gets the three ball to drop to cut into the lead. This time, Sean Smith, another guy who's been knocking down. He knocks it down as well. Sean Smith again knocks down the three ball. And now we have Richie Espinel, who ties it up at 72 apiece to put the game into overtime. And the three-point shooting didn't stop there. Peter Martinez to put the dagger in the coffin. At first, he finds Jorge's. And then George Sapp, top of the key. He knocks down the three ball. Another three to add on top of that. Sean Smith, top of the key. He knocks down the three ball. And like I mentioned before, Peter Martinez, he puts the nail in the coffin right here, knocks down another contested three, and that gives the Pioneers a win, 84-82. to 82. Sean Smith with an incredible game. Justin had to be the MVP of the game? I think it's easy to say that Sean Smith had to be the MVP of this game. He had 24 points, four rebounds, shot 7 of 13 from downtown, and as Joe Ray had mentioned before, they shot 41% from three as a team, shooting 18 of 44. I don't think they can keep that up all season, but if they can, I don't see them losing again, if we're being quite honest. How important is this win for the Pioneers going forward? It's, it's extremely important. Uh, they're playing one of their biggest rivals in Montclair State, one of the best teams in the conference again in Montclair State. This is a true test, and it's their first NJAC win of the season. The NJAC wins matter the most. You could be 6-10 and 10 in the conference and 5-1 in conference wins, you're going to get into the playoffs. But if you're winning the games that don't matter and, lose and dropping the conference ones, you're not going to see any postseason action. Justin? I definitely, it's, it's good for them. They're a young team. They only have three seniors on the entire roster. And the fact that they did beat their Route 46 rival in Montclair State, it can pay off in the long run. It gives them confidence. But the high volume of threes, looking at their numbers, they're not a great three-point shooting team. So the fact that the majority of those did fall, it helped them out. But I don't think they should keep shooting that amount. Hey, well, real quick, what do you guys think? Uh, big win is important for the future. Do you think they can keep going with this momentum? 
Definitely a big win, especially with such a young team, like Justin said. You know, going forward, at least this seems like the team has an identity with good ball movement moving the ball around. Douglas? Yeah, it's hard to sustain hitting threes that this at this rate. So when they get Dapo Babmos back, they'll be able to penetrate towards the basket more. I don't think this is their team's identity at 18 for 44 from three. That's all the time we have for Pioneer Sports. You can keep up to date with everything you need to know about the Pioneers by checking out WPUPioneers.com. Make sure you don't go anywhere because up next, the NBA crew is back.